When people think about ethical culture, of course, they think about the, the numerous social justice initiatives that this organization has undertaken and how the Voice for Justice has really emanated from this building and has been so fruitful and productive in touching the lives of thousands of people, both known and unknown to us. But I think it's important to mention that ethical culture is first and foremost a religious organization that um, promotes a reverence for ethical ideals, the most important of which is uh, an appreciation for the dignity, the intrinsic, invaluable dignity of the human being. And when we hold that dignity uh, in high esteem, we recognize that this is a world in which the dignity of the individual, of men, women, and children, indeed is oppressed all the time. And it's out of that understanding that the social justice commitment of ethical culture emerges. We can start programs or projects and initiatives and we can hope that people will come on board with them. But I think what's consistent throughout our history and I hope will be into our future is providing this space, providing the opportunity for people to come together and to engage in meaningful dialogue. As a clergy person, I, throughout my training, I was told the most important thing is to be the non-anxious presence. And I believe that the New York Society for Ethical Culture can be the non-anxious presence in the city today. Um, and the ethical movement you know, throughout the country can be that non-anxious presence where we can hold all those differing opinions and with, with ethical humility are able to provide the time and the space for meaningful dialogue. So we can take on any number of initiatives as long as we have that always, always in mind. And you know, we, our position has always been that ethics is supreme for us. It's the supremacy of ethics. We have to relearn how to live in the world. Um, we just are now figuring out how to live with each other. So that's part of the struggle of being an ethical culturist is it's not just my world, it's other people's world as well and figuring out how to make it work. And by that now I include other non-human species and the rest of um, life on this earth that we all need to figure out how to make it work in harmony and in balance as much as we can and the impediments are only just a lack of imagination. I think that justice for juveniles will have a long-term impact. It's something that's, uh, that resonates with me as a, as a clergy leader and also with uh, the membership here because when ethical culture began, so much of it was about children, about the family. And uh, my, my sense is that here in New York, we, we have this opportunity to really reach out and, uh, and help those uh, individuals, those, those children and families who need us most. So many of the children from New York City are being shipped upstate where they're being warehoused and uh, there, is, there seems to be no, no education going on. Uh, they talk about rehabilitation but in many cases these are children who haven't had the initial supporting homes or the supporting the kind of support um, that they needed uh, to begin with. The Advocacy Forum is an initiative that I'm actually more personally and more intimately involved in. We invite uh, representatives of activist organizations who are uh, working on the problems that we're discussing at the forum to bring their petitions, their letters, their cause to our foyer and afterwards to engage people who are here directly in letter writing, in uh, petition signing, signing them up for various demonstrations and meetings that will carry forward the agenda of these progressive organizations. Are we creating a new movement by this? No, but we're actively serving as the fulcrum, as the focal point for the development of new coalitions, as it were, of uh, organizations that are pushing forward, again, the types of politically and ethically based concerns that ethical culture has historically always dedicated itself to. For me, of course, as an environmentalist, the most important work that we've been doing around those issues that have to do with the environment, um, climate change, um, that have to do with alternative economies, uh, finding better energy solutions. As an environmentalist, I don't just look at one habitat, I look at several different habitats and what allows life to flourish in that one spot. And that's essentially the kind of work that we're trying to do is to, is to pay attention, to, to listen, to um, ask questions and to find out 
what each of us wants and needs in that particular place, and then create that space that allows all that being and all that life in that area to flourish. Ethical culture has focused historically in the past more on humans, and now many of us in ethical culture have focused more and more on all of being. And so how do we engage the rest of the planet and the rest of the world, and by that I mean the non-human as well, and that whole process of creating environments that allow people to flourish. I think one of the biggest mistakes we commonly make in the environment, of course, is all thinking that there's only one solution to anything. And ethical culture has never said that. There are multiple solutions to multiple different kinds of problems that are all unique for the various environments in which those things occur. I come into this space and I see the place where people meet to seek the highest is holy ground. That always grounds me. And I often think about what does that mean? Everyone who walks through this door brings their whole selves through. Sometimes when I return home to visit my parents and I go to, to mass with them, I was raised Catholic, I think of the things that I leave at the door of St. Anne's when I walk in with them. And I don't leave anything at the door here. 